Hi everyone, we're going to get going so we can stay um, on time for the organizers. We're going to be talking about empowering Saudi hospitality with local F&B sourcing today. Um, and with me on stage, I have Mohamed Magdalani, Chief Franchised Asset Operations from Dan Company. Round of applause, please. And I have Mr. Ahmed al -Ajami, Founder and Chairman of Takara Hospitality Group. Thanks, gentlemen. Let's take a seat. <clears throat> so this subject, uh, when I was asked to moderate, is a subject that's actually very close to my heart. I have two young children at home, and I'm constantly thinking about where we're sourcing food from, what am I feeding them, is the food fresh, where is it coming from, and also, ultimately, how is it impacting the community that we're living in, and how is it impacting uh, the, the farmers that are supplying us? Um, and in many ways, the hospitality industry is no different. At the end of the day, farm to table is really about giving the guests a great food experience, and that is speaking to you know, local sourcing, sustainability, etc. So I'm going to start with my first topic for today, which is really economic impact and cost efficiency. And my first question is for Mohammed, and I really want to know what are the key challenges in sourcing food and beverage locally in Saudi Arabia? Thank you very much for, for your question, and uh, uh, I agree with, with you, it's a quite uh, very exciting subject. Uh, allow me first to introduce uh, myself. My name is Mohamed Margalani. I am I'm the Chief Franchise Asset Officer for Dan Company. I spent almost um, 18 years of experience in hotels operation. I used to be the cluster general manager for the Riscarlot in Riyadh, Riscarlot in Jeddah, and they work with Four Seasons brand. And um, recently, recently means last year, I have joined uh, Dan Company, which is part of PIF uh, project, and it is about agritourism. So. When, when I see and when, when I look at the subject about the challenges that uh, uh, touch the, su the subject of fresh product and farm to table, uh, here in Saudi Arabia and particularly, uh, probably um, uh, the availability of some of the product which is related to seasonality and uh, uh, the consistent of producing those product uh, here in the market also for the, for the, for the existing uh, uh, vegetables or fruits or product. Um, currently, there are a lot of farms, Saudi Arabia and Al Ahsa, uh, just to be specifically, is the biggest o oasis for dates in the world. And, um, but if you look at the individual farms and the production of the individual farms, you can see that there is no consistency. So you can see one farm producing certain amount of dates. Um, uh, the next year, it is changed. Um, Probably the year after, it will not produce. So there is no consistency between the, between, uh, the product that is uh, coming. Also, talking about the large-scale infrastructure, um, I believe this is, this is also one of, the, one of the challenges. So just to summarize it, I would say the large scale of uh, infrastructure, consistency, and also the availability of the product, which is not originally grown in the, in the country. So these are obviously logist logistical challenges, and how, how do you feel we can overcome those in Saudi? Uh, definitely collaborations. So collaborations between the, uh, the farm owners, um, between the supplier, and between uh, all the stakeholders when it comes to the investor, to the hospitality, um, uh, to the supply, um, having, uh, investing in um, uh, a cold chain. I believe this, this will help a lot, especially in, in logistic-wise for the product, uh, perishable uh, product, and as well as when you talk about um, solution, at the tech, it comes also in, in top of the, uh, uh, of the pyramid, investing on systems to uh, assist taking that product and reaching it out to, to the right supplier or to the hotels. Uh, I believe this, this will solve a lot of problems. Mm. Great. Thank you so much. Ahmed, over to you. How do you think uh, sourcing locally has impacted your bottom line and cost efficiency within your organization? Allow me to begin by saying, first of all, I'm thankful to be here. And um, I'm thankful to be among all of you. Um, I, would, um, I would begin by saying that we Saudis are um, extremely nationalistic. 
Um, we love our country. We blindly align with our leaders uh, toward Vision 2030. And converting to the country to number one destination in the world. Now, at THG, Takar Hospitality Group, we focus and we commit to the Vision 2030 by sourcing locally um, and ensuring that w we capitalize and we profit out of it. Um, so, to, to answer your question clearly, I would say that sourcing locally provides cost efficiency for restaurants in general. Now, and, 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 and I would say that this is not only in Saudi, but also globally. Um, local food doesn't travel for too long. Um, you're, you're saving costs because normally farmers or local producers have a competitive advantage to provide uh, a, a cheaper quality um, and automatically uh, provide discounts as you order uh, bulks. Um, on, on top of that, between pr local producers and uh, global producers, one of the things that you face when you come into Saudi, local producers don't have to pay, to sell, to pay import fees, but globals are. Yes. And they would. Those national import fees are not cheap. Um, you're cutting down on transportation fees. All logistic expenses, all uh, long distance cheap, uh, sh uh, shipping fees, um, and automatically all of this, to me as a, as a restaurant owner or as a group owner, this helps my p &L. Now, that's in terms of financial uh, perspective, but when you look also at an experience of a client and one of our outlets, when you provide fresher food, when you provide high quality food, that is what a client is looking for. This is something that we push to provide throughout our outlets. And that aligns with the Saudi 2030 vision as well. We're a hospitable country. We're hospitable people. We love hospitality. And we always want to share with you the best possible quality, the best possible experience. And this is something that we truly focus on in, in, in Takar Hospitality Group. Great. Um, I wanted to ask you another question. Are you finding that guests are asking more about sourcing? Do you find that guests are starting to be a bit more curious about where their food is sourced from? Despite this is not one of our brands, but allow me to use McDonald's as an example. Um, one of the things that McDonald's shows in all their advertisements is we're sourcing locally. We're sourcing locally. Saudi Arabians, um, and most of the guys are around here, whether we're talking about expats, whether we're talking about Saudis. When I travel, I look for local restaurants in every country I go to. When expats come to Saudi, they look for local brands mm. to try. For Saudis, it is always a brand that we want to go to. We want to support Saudis mm. within the country. I, um, I live in a hotel on Olea Street. Um, and it shocks me when I see one coffee shop that as a Saudi brand is full at 4 a.m. in the morning. This is something that's quite impressive. And that tells you what kind of culture you have over here. Now, add to this local or sourcing local uh, produce, people would be pushing for this. One of the things that we face in the Eastern province, if I were to work in a city called Patif, um, is that if you don't source locally, they wouldn't eat it. If you don't source from Qatif, they would not eat it. <laughs> so um, it, that's a challenge that you would face in a city. Imagine across Saudi Arabia. If you were to say that I am sourcing locally, and you are, automatically clients would value you much more than others. If I were in the US, for example, and I'm saying, you know what, I'm in Midwest, I'm sourcing from St. Louis, Missouri. People would appreciate this for several reasons also. When you're, when you're, when you're um, sourcing locally, you get that freshness that is not available elsewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. You get the taste of the land that is not available elsewhere in the world. And those are things that we focus and capitalize on here. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you. I was actually having dinner today at a franchise brand, and my colleague and I were, were enjoying the food. And the owner was telling us that they actually have to use 
the brand products. They're actually flying them in internationally. And I thought, wow, that carbon footprint must be pretty crazy. And it's such a shame that the brand standard won't allow for something as simple as a tomato um, you know, to bring that in. And that obviously, how, is that, how have you found that with franchise brands versus you know, local brands homegrown, where you do have that autonomy to make that decision to, to order local? I agree. Yeah. I agree. You're cutting emissions like no other. I, um, my director of operation, uh, his previous group was been winning a green sustainable star. I asked him, what is that? And he was saying that, listen, we're cutting on emission, we're cutting on, on uh, a carbon uh, yeah. footprint in the world. And we're contributing to, um, to farming trees mm. with all the amount that they gain per year. This is something that struck me. And, and a local produce, when you are purchasing those, you're cutting on that transportation. You're 100%. cutting on, 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 on such uh, unsustainable, environmentally unhealthy. And an impact on the freshness. It brings the freshness. Yeah. It makes us much more sustainable environmentally. Great. Let's move on to our next topic, which is quality, sustainability, and guest experience. And Mohammed, I'd love to know, what role does sustainability play in the farm-to-table movement in Saudi? Well, sustainability is in its core when it comes to farm-to-table experiences. Uh, um, uh, allow me to give you a glimpse from my experience in hotels operation, how things has been has transitioned since... Uh, uh, Five years. Uh, previously, each each hotel would be uh, very strict to its brand standards when it comes to the product, um, either furnitures or, or product, food and beverage, and they were forcing all hotels from different regions to follow the standard strictly. Um, since almost three years, this whole things has changed. So most of the international hotel chains, uh, they are encouraging. Uh, the hotels to utilize the local product and local content uh, and this is basically for uh, for several benefits one of it is uh, uh, food waste uh, healthy soil uh, uh, conserved water and at the same time uh, transferring the product from a country to a country which will reduce the um, the impact of the carbon um, and uh, at the same time, also cost efficiency, right? If you if you utilize something uh, locally, definitely this will impact the, uh, the will have a, a, a very very strong impact. Also, putting in mind the social responsibility, right? So whenever there is a business or there is an investment in in, in a certain country, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, there is a social responsibility for for these. Uh, companies which will open, well, which are operating in, uh, in Saudi Arabia or any part of the world to utilize the local uh, uh, production and local content. I hope I answered. Yes, 100%. Thank you very much. Um, and Ahmed, I'd love to know, how does Takara Hospitality leverage local food to enhance guest experiences at your outlets? I remember when I first began in 2019, it was very difficult to find local produce even through a normal Google search. Local farmers are not available over there. So one of the things that we focus on was to ensure that we gain that knowledge throughout the market, do proper research, proper surveys, to understand how can we get tomatoes for 12 months a year uh, locally. Find out who are the producers that can potentially support us without having those type of challenges with them. And, and what we've developed was a trading arm mm. to us, which is called Santiam. It's a company that looks for high quality ingredients and, and local produce throughout the year. Fantastic. And um, how, do you, how do you support them? Are, are you sending a lot of your people over to the farms to meet with the farmers, to speak with them, to understand what their challenges are? Supporting locals or supporting local farmers 
It has to be done not only by Takara Hospitality Group. Mm. It has to be done by everyone within the country. By focusing to purchase from them, you continue to make them competitive, you continue to make them to thrive, you continue to give giving them the ability to increase the ranges as well. Um, for us, one of the things that we truly do is we partner up with these local farmers. One, to ensure again um, that our supply is continuous. A second thing is to ensure that we are updated on their uh, stocks. Yes. To ensure our continuity and sustainability. Interesting. So you obviously they're implementing technology to assist you with that as well. We are. You are. We are. We are. Fantastic. Ahmed, what challenges have you faced in the process? I would say that sometimes local farmers are not close by to our venues. Mm -hmm. So that is normally an issue that we face. Um, another issue is definitely the shortage in stocks. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been overcoming this throughout our communication with them, our connections to them. Uh, ensuring that we're updated on their uh, stocks, ensuring that we don't have one supplier. Um, and, 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 and thankfully, and, uh, last time I checked, within my area, we have 100 farmers that we are connected with, that we are um, in, in talks with, if not on a daily basis, at least two or three times a week. Fantastic. That's incredible. Um, I wanted to also ask more about... <coughs> technology and yes. automating things. Can we go deeper into the technology available to manage these kind of processes with your local suppliers? I would say that focus is not mine maybe to respond to, but I can respond to it in terms of my, uh, my group. Yeah. So one of the things that we focus, well, at least the three things that we focus on is AI, AR, and, uh, and, and, and VR. So with that, AI can, can help you respond to customers faster, mm -hmm. while the other two can definitely help with enhancing um, training for our employees. And this is something we are contributing to and, and making investments in. Um, in a way that um, I never thought I would before. Mm -hmm. But the market is changing, um, is looking at technologies in much bigger ways, and that is something that we focus on. I'll, I'll tell you this as well. Santiam currently is transforming completely to have all its systems to be uh, automated in an effort that we can support our restaurants faster, and potentially be out there for um, other people that might be interested. Great. Thank you. I hope I answered that. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'd also like to know organic. Let's have, a, let's have a chat about organic produce versus normally grown produce. Let's muscle in on this one. Mohammed. If I understand correctly, organic food and... Versus the, uh, normally grown. Oh. There, there has been a recent statistics. Uh, I, I can't recall the percentage, mm -hmm. but with, the, with the, um, young, the increase of younger generations, and here in Saudi Arabia, 70% of uh, the population are below 30. And this includes me, eh? I'm below 30, right? Yeah. I'm just kidding. But, um, so 70% of the population are below 30, right? Um, and uh, the new generations tend to first know exactly what are they eating and from where, uh, from where they are getting the food that they are eating. And the second thing, how organic it is. And yes. you can see that in the, in the trend in, in, the, in the country. I'm certain since you are more experienced than me in food and beverage, I'm sure you've seen the, the trends of organic shops, right, around uh, the kingdom. Now, if you go to any supermarket, you will see a complete corner of organic food, and, uh, and this is because of the, of the big demand, and still the supply in the market uh, lacking a lot of, uh, a lot of um, support from inter international organizations to support the organic food. Um, even, even with the country here in Saudi Arabia, they are supporting uh, 
um, uh, organic, which definitely conserves uh, a lot of uh, resources uh, in, in, the, uh, in the kingdom. Um, Giving an example of hotels, I know many hotels now, they have part of their KPIs to make sure that uh, they pro not produce, but they import uh, organic food uh, from, uh, from locally around, around the kingdom. And there has been a couple of good examples uh, of international hotels that has adopted in their menu an organic uh, uh, food farming, even though it's, it might be slightly expensive than, than the regular food yeah. uh, chain. But at the end, there is, a, there is a big demand, especially with the increase of wellness, wellness for uh, the younger generations and uh, luxury for them is different. Previously, luxury was just enjoying the, the, the good life in a fancy place, but now luxury is more about um, experiencing um, um, authentic experience, which I believe organic represent the authenticity of the place Correct. that you are. Uh, Correct. Doing. And so how do you see Farm to Table evolving over, over the coming years? Speaking of Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. um, you know, according to um, uh, the report that has been issued from the um, uh, WTO about the Tourism Development Index, uh, Saudi Arabia has jumped to a, to a, to a very uh, to a, a good level, yet our inspiration to be uh, in the top. And if you look at the report, the, thing, the things that were missing from most of the Arab countries was about um, uh, sustainability, agritourism, uh, uh, organic production. So that's why the, the kingdom right now, they are focusing on um, making sure that all the natural resources are going to the market, uh, promoting it, develop, developing it, um, when it comes also to uh, uh, either organic or local product. And I believe uh, there is a, right now there is a huge opportunities for international companies and local companies uh, to come and utilize this space and provide many solutions. And this will create more, uh, of course it will create more uh, job opportunities and at the same time it will, uh, it will give opportunities for international companies to come and also elevate the market to another level. Um, so. If you ask me, from a person who came, who is coming from a luxury perspective, I see authenticity and um, um, agri agri tourism and farm to table experiences. This is the future in the coming uh, few years in the kingdom. Great, thank you, Ahmed. I'm going to ask you the same question to really muscle in on your view on where it's headed, the future of farm to table in Saudi Arabia. I do believe that it will increase massively. And I'll, um, let me say this, uh, it's a cycle. Yeah. So the farm is there, we take the food, it gets transported to the restaurant, restaurant fixes it, prepares it, creates a dish with it, um, gives you a unique experience, you eat, then we go back to the same cycle on and on and on. What is happening is that we are depending on imports, but the local market is growing. The farmers are, are, are becoming bigger. The supply that is there is becoming um, uh, is, is increasingly required. When when um, when he stated a little bit ago that market is going toward organic yes. produce. Yes, we are. And 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 the reason for that is truly because we are looking for a fresher quality. And, and healthier options, much more nutritious options, not only for ourselves, but also for our clients. This is something that we've been seeing that it's increasing. Um, unfortunately, if we were to look to import those items to Saudi, you're definitely looking at higher wastage, mm -hmm. higher spoilage, um, higher expenses, higher uh, carbon footprint, which is not something that me as a person, and I believe everyone here, or the Saudi vision is heading toward. We're looking to produce that in, 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 internally. We're looking to improve and in, in, increase 
um, the number of local producers that are here mm. in Saudi. Um, we look, we're looking also to, to enhance or to contribute to the vision by increasing that uh, culinary heritage through local farmers, through increasing that farm-to-table experience. Beautiful. So now you mentioned Saudi 2030. I'm going to spend my last five minutes talking about Saudi 2030. And Mohammed, how can local F&B sourcing align with these, these ambitious goals? And many things, actually. So sustainability, it's in the root of Vision 2030. All the projects around the kingdom, it is related to sustainability. And the sustainability is one of the main um, um, uh, driver for, for um, uh, and supporter for, for the Vision 2030. And it's, we, we talk about specifically local product, local food, um, organic food, farm to table, along with sustainability. Um, it, is, it is impacting it in, in several, uh, in several uh, areas, such as diversification of quality, opening more jobs when opening, uh, when preparing the logistics of the local farms, this needs a lot of manpower that will be involved. So therefore, it will open more, uh, more jobs. Uh, at the same time, um, uh, it will somehow control the reliance on importation by, by sourcing everything locally. And it will enrich the local market, local investors. And I believe this is, all these are, are some of the main uh, uh, goal and purposes of Vision 2030. And I hope my colleague Ahmed probably he can enlighten us. Uh, um. Sure. I mean, Ahmed, I'd like to. How can other hospi uh, hospitality groups rally um, together to support the vision? So, I would say that one of the one of one of the goals for the vision is to enhance the economy. Yes. Um, enhance the quality of living, um, sustainability, um, environmental. All of this we contribute to. Mm -hmm. So economy, having local restaurants, restaurant owner, local producers, that automatically uh, stimulate that circle of economy. Yes. Um, automatically also stimulates jobs, as um, our colleague just mentioned. Um, not only quality of living comes from organic produce. Um, to me, I call it homemade food also. Um, that, that being said, those are parts of the vision that we are, we are contributing to on a daily basis throughout such a title, simply. Mm -hmm. Such as suppliers that are supplying the market, producers or processors such as ourselves or restaurants that are, that are uh, serving um, tables on a daily basis. Great. Thank you so much. Gentlemen, we are out of time. So thank you very much, but I'd like to hand it over to the floor to see if you have any questions for my guests. Thank you everyone for your valuable input on this um, topic. I just wanted to ask about how, how do you think Saudis, how susceptible are they you know, you've mentioned how interested they are in, in seeing and supporting um, local sourced food. But in terms of dishes and, and modernizing the Saudi dishes, how susceptible do you think the Saudis will be? You know, if, if they see their, their loved dish that they see at home, but it's modernized, it's brought to the 21st century. What do you guys think? It's a lovely question. Who would like to answer that one? Please allow me. <laughs> Mr. Ahmed. Allow me. Thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you what. I am... Um, Back in 2019, I opened an, 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 a Japanese restaurant called Takara. One of the things that we did was we fused our food and we fused our, our recipes to have Arabian ingredients to go within. One of the things, uh, Sumbula provides me kunafa, which we created one of the best selling dishes in the Eastern province, which is a kunafa shum, an appetizer that you'd eat literally your fingers tips behind it. Um, one of the things that, that 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 this is actually you, you're serving a local palate. Um, you automatically gain those people to come to you by serving food that that matches their taste. 
Um, earlier today, I was talking to this uh, amazing lady who lives in Dubai. Um, I, I do believe that she is from an Indian descent. So I asked her, what is the food that you like? So she said, spicy food. We love spicy food. But we don't love it as, as, as spicy as some other countries would. Now, having to cater that to, your, to the market within Saudi and understanding that you're catering to a, a taste that we understand or a taste that uh, the community here understands is very, very important. And, and, and being able to take those local produce potentially, have that on a table, fuse it and modernize it in a way that um, connects you to the locals is quite important. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. I, think, um, I have visited uh, a farm um, outside, outside of Riyadh, and apparently uh, this farm is potential to, to, be, uh, to produce uh, goat milk and goat cheese. And one of the things that uh, I was informed that this farm has been requested to import some of the goat cheese to Riyadh to some of the famous pastry shops for Kunafa. Goat cheese. So, I mean, having heard this, I think still the, the, um, the product, the natural product that we have in Saudi Arabia, you cannot judge because I don't think it, it gets uh, enough opportunity to go on the market. But I believe with everything happening, this, uh, we will see how, how how the local product that we have in the country can be utilized well, um, especially when it comes to international dishes, international standard. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for having us here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.